Hi, my name is Himantu Sharma, and today I'm going to be presenting current and future roles of MRI and prostate cancer diagnosis. These are our disclosures. Prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in American men. The survival rate has increased substantially from 83% in the 80s to 98% nowadays. Some of that is driven by better treatment. Um, another driver of that is better screening, namely through PSA. Uh, however, PSA screening has led to substantial overdiagnosis and overtreatment of prostate cancer, which has side effects, including erectile dysfunction and urinary symptoms. For some historical perspective, the first uh, published study of the prostate MRI was published in 1982. Um, and you can see that in the top right of the screen. Since then, the sequence in, in the 90s and 2000s, the sequences that we now use for prostate MRI were first applied, including DCE MRI and DWI. Uh, in 2011, the first cons consensus meeting on MRI and prostate imaging was held, and T2-weighted imaging, DWI, and DCE MRI were identified as the most important sequences for PCA. In 2012, Pyrad's version one which was a system for to standardize the acquisition of an interpretation of prostate cancer imaging was published. And in 2015, PIRADS V2 was released, uh, which simplified the interpretation of DCE MRI and identified the dominant sequences for different zones in the prostate. In 2017, the AUA endorsed MPMRI for men who have abnormal digital red pill exams or elevated prostate-specific uh, prostate antigen, but not, not specifically for screening or surveillance. So multi-parametric MRI has become the standard for prostate cancer. Um, and PIRADS, like I mentioned, was designed to standardize the uh, acquisition and the interpretation of images. The three most important sequences for PIRADS are DWI, T2-weighted imaging, and DCE. And each of those has different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, DWI is best for the uh, peripheral zone, and it's the most sensitive to artifacts. T2-weighted imaging is best for the transitional zone, and it's useful for the de detection of extra prostatic extension of disease. Uh, DCE is useful for differentiating ambiguous findings and is kind of a safety net sequence um, that is useful when the other uh, sequences are ambiguous. The use of endorectal coil for prostate cancer screening, for prostate cancer imaging, um, is still some uh, a matter of debate. As of now, evidence suggests that it's useful when uh, prostate cancer imaging is performed at 1.5 Tesla, but for three Tesla, it's unclear whether or not it's necessary. Uh, in PIRADS 2, it was left open to radiologists uh, to at their discretion to use endorectal coils based on whether or not they were available and patient preference. Um, so they're variably used in, uh, in prostate imaging. So currently, uh, prostate, uh, prostate MRI has a number of roles in uh, prostate cancer imaging. So one key role for the MRI is staging of prostate cancer before surgery or ablation is performed and in the preoperative planning stage. Um, it's also very useful for diagnosing extra prostatic extension, um, multifocal disease, or metastases. And it's also useful in patients who have a high PSA with negative biopsy or no prior bi biopsy. And in particular, MPMRI is useful when there's anterior t transitional zone disease because the transvaginal ultrasound biopsies often systemically miss uh, or underestimate cancer in that region. So MPMRI is also used for active surveillance of patients with lower risk disease. Um, like we mentioned, it's also useful for identifying local and uh, pelvic node recurrence, and it can be used to guide focal therapy. And uh, the, in combination with PET-CT, it can be used to perform whole body surveillance in patients who have high-risk disease. So some of the new, in, new directions that prostate MRI has been used in includes 
um, for focal therapy, for MRI guided biopsies, and for detecting recurrence. Um, a number of studies have been performed comparing the usefulness of prostate MRI to uh, the traditional method of detection, which is transsexual ultrasound biopsy. Um, so some of these include the PROMISE trial, which found that the MPMRI is more sensitive and less specific than the transsexual ultrasound biopsy. Um, what they also found was that the MPMRI reduces overdiagnosis of the clinically insignificant prostate cancer and improves detection of clinically significant prostate cancer. Uh, another trial in 2018 called Precision found that the MRI targeted biopsy was more of, was better at detecting clinically significant p prostate cancer uh, and better at not detecting clinically insignificant prostate cancer than the standard transrectal ultrasound biopsy. So the convention, the conventional method to screen for prostate cancer is to do a digital rectal exam and a, a PSA followed by a transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy. MPMRI may be considered in men with indications for biopsy to reduce detection of uh, indolent disease over detection and over treatment. There are some other additional roles that prostate MR MPMRI may play include uh, in MRI targeted biopsies, which have been found to be more uh, effective at detecting prostate cancer than transrectal ultrasound. Um, like we mentioned in for extra prostatic extension for seminal vesicle invasion and lymph node involvement, MPMRI is a very useful tool. And lastly, for anterior prostate cancer, um, MPMRI may be better than uh, transrectal ultrasound because transrectal ultrasound can systemic, systematically miss um, cancers in those regions. For patients who have uh, relatively low-grade um, prostate cancer, they might be good candidates for active surveillance uh, in which they undergo serial MPMRI. Um, however, the, the role of MPMRI in monitoring men on active surveillance is still something that is uh, a subject of debate and a, a, a field of active research. So another uh, direction that um, the prostate cancer MRI is going is biparametric MRI. So as we mentioned, the current protocol is for uh, is doing an MRI with, um, with three Tesla, not using an endorectal coil and using the sequences T2-weighted imaging, DWI and DCE MRI. Biparametric MRI is it eliminates the DCE MRI and just uses T2-weighted imaging in DWI slash ADC. So this has the advantage of being uh, cheaper, shorter, and more comfortable for the patient um, and still performs robustly in diagnosing clinically significant prostate cancer with a high sensitivity and specificity. Um, however, the as of now, the PIRATES committee has not yet um, endorsed using biparametric uh, MRI because DCE still plays an important role as a backup sequence when the T2-weighted imaging and DWI slash ADC are ambiguous um, or difficult to interpret. So here we see some examples of the technical advances in the prostate MRI. Um, the signal to noise quality ratio has significantly improved and uh, a number of novel contrast mechanisms are have been explored that are uh, demonstrated here below um, that may be uh, that may be useful in the clinical setting and as they are undergo more clinical testing. Another direction is uh, targeting screening towards highest populations. Um, so and, and then using. Uh, using the MPMRI to screen those pa those patients um, and therefore avoiding unnecessary biopsies based on uh, on high PSA values. And part of that is correcting the PSAs uh, based on the prostate volume. And again, uh, cost reduction may be possible by using biparametric MRI and active surveillance um, as we discussed. So another direction is targeted fusion biopsy in which um, the 
the ultrasound imaging and the MRI imaging is combined to more accurately sample the uh, the prostate. And this has been uh, well, this has been used in uh, many practices and has been shown to be uh, to improve sensitivity and have um, fewer clinical complications. So those are some of the uh, the new directions in which um, prostate MRI is heading. And uh, thank you for listening to our talk. These are our references.